This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase. A lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course, and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually, or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now these are live workshops hosted over Zoom and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm gonna show you some slides. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna check out the code. We're gonna run it and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using vapor and you can see the pricing very accessible only fifty dollar for a workshop then we have a swift data fundamentals workshop and we also have testing workshop so definitely check out these resources on awesomesharp.school now let's go back to the video now let's go ahead and see that how we can implement the delay functionality now for the delay functionality we are going to go ahead and create a new file and we can add it in the utils folder because it's more of a utility and I'm just going to call it delay. Let's go ahead and create this file delay. So delay will be a class and the job of the delay is to well delay depending on the number of seconds that you're going to pass in. So we can have seconds over here as double. So in order to create a delay, you pass in the seconds. But if you don't pass in the seconds, not to worry, we're just going to default it to two. Now, two might be too much, but this is just for an example. You can go ahead and change it to one if you want. But just to show you the delay, I'm just going to set it to two as a default. But again, you can change it if you want to. For the delay to work, we are going to create a function and we will call it perform work. So this is where you're going to be passing your own thing, meaning your uh, closure that you want. And we're going to be passing it like this. Okay. This work will be of type, we're going to create a work item, which will be a dispatch work item. Then if we create a dispatch work item, we can dispatch it later on. So let's go ahead and create a dispatch work item. And we can now initialize it. Work item equals to, this can be a dispatch work item, as you can see. Uh, we can pass in a block. And the actual work is going to perform will be based on the function that you're passing in. So what we're doing is we're passing in a closure, and that closure we are executing and that's part of the work item. And next, and finally, we can go ahead and say dispatch queue dot main and async after now, whatever the now time is, plus the number of seconds, and execute the work item. And we can unwrap it because we know that we have already created the instance of this. So this is kind of like a safely done. We can also have another function to cancel it because sometimes you will check mark or you will select a reminder to be completed and then within two seconds you'll say oh I changed my mind I want to not mark it complete 
So this is where we can go ahead and go to the work item and cancel it. Okay, that's it. Now let's go back to our cell view. And you can write this code in the cell view. You can write this code somewhere else. Whenever you get the stuff back, that is perfectly fine. But we're just gonna go ahead and do it inside the cell view. So after we check the event, well, way before that, we need to create an instance of the delay. So delay is a class, so I'll just go somewhere and I'll create an instance of the delay. So this can be anywhere, so right over here, it's fine. Now, wherever the person is actually checking. So let's go ahead and see where we're checking. So right over here, you can see that this is where the checked is checkbox. We can go ahead and cancel the old task. If there's any running old task, we will go ahead and cancel it. So delay.cancel. And then call the onChecked. All right. Call the onChecked change, which we are actually calling it anyway, inside the delay. So how do we do that? Well, so we simply say delay.perform work. And we simply call this. And that's it. That should allow us to delay. And I think the best way would be to just run the app and see what it does. So I'm gonna to go to the home view, I'm gonna to try to refresh it. And we'll be able to see hopefully that we will have a little bit of time to mark the item complete. So it shouldn't be instantly marked with is completed. And that is exactly what we are trying to do. All right, you can see this taking a little bit of time to create this uh, simulator or Xcode preview. Hopefully it's gonna work, but let's see. Still loading. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, there we go. So we already have one list, blue list. I'm gonna go there and we have only one task right now. Now, another thing to note over here is that the info button should not be visible right now because this will only be visible when I click on the task, I click on the name actually. Okay, check, uncheck, see that? Check, uncheck. Okay, let's go ahead and check and let it go. Oops, it actually, I think I passed the time or something, but uh, it wasn't actually marked checked. Okay, let's go ahead and check it. And there we go, okay. Let's see if it's actually removed. You can see it's removed. What about if I go ahead and add it again? So reminder two, and let's go ahead and add another one, reminder three. And I'm gonna check and uncheck. Oh, so something is going differently wrong. It shouldn't be doing that. So we need to check it what exactly is going on. So one of the reason might be that we are only sending the reminder back to the caller. Maybe we should also be sending whether the status is checked or not, because we can't simply just turn it around. It should be based on whether it is checked or not, right? So let's try that approach. So in order to do that, we will have to go back over here in our case, and we will add another parameter saying Boolean. So this means that you need to send in uh, the checked value or the Boolean value, okay? Whether it is checked or not. And now we have to go back to our reminder list view, and we need to update this part. You can see that over here, it's simply telling us that it will only be taking a reminder, but let's go ahead and take that and say is completed. So now we're gonna be passing in multiple things. And over here again, we're gonna be passing in another is completed. This means that our function, this one, the reminder check change is gonna change. And we are gonna be passing in the is completed. Is completed, great. And that is what we're going to be assigning over here. Whatever the value is being passed. After making these changes that we have done, let's go ahead and run the app again. I'm gonna to go to the home view and go to the blue list, check it, uncheck it. So within the two seconds time limit, I was able to uncheck it and it's still there, that is great. Let's go ahead and add another reminder. I'm gonna say reminder number three. And let's go ahead and add reminder number four. 
And now I can go ahead and check reminder number four and let it go. Great. Reminder number two, three, check, uncheck. Okay, so all of that you can see it's now working correctly. So we have actually added a delayed behavior. Reminder number two, I'm not going to check it. There we go. Reminder number three, great. So it looks like our app is working great now. And the next thing we need to do is to make sure that we will show you the reminder detail view where you can edit the reminder when you click on the info button. But the info button should only be visible when you tap on any of this area. Okay, so when you tap on this, then the info button will be available. So we have to do all of that stuff. Let's go to the next video.